Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, and I'm in a shop, and that's weird, I know, because I lost my shop a little bit ago, but my friends at TRQ were kind enough to invite me out and let me use their shop to shoot a couple of videos, which is what I'm going to do for you here today. I'm also going to be shooting a couple of other videos with TRQ, so keep an eye out for those. I'll link those down in the description so you can go there quickly and check those out when they're available. But today, I want to talk about when you want to condemn a vehicle. So when a vehicle is no longer roadworthy, when do you make that call? When do you say, ah, well, maybe it's not worth investing anymore into? Maybe I want to keep it. Well, we're going to cover that today using this Chevy truck and that forerunner over there. So between these two vehicles, we'll basically get you in the know as far as what to look for if you want to condemn a vehicle or fix it. To start with, we're going to cover the basic things that would cause you to condemn a vehicle and to call it unroadworthy. And in my opinion, those things are structural damage, either caused by collision or corrosion or possibly flood damage. Now, I'm not saying a flood damaged vehicle should be condemned, but there's a good possibility that it could be condemned depending upon how bad that damage is and how much it's gonna cost to make that repair. We'll talk about that more on the end. But for now, we'll look at these vehicles and see if we can find things on them that will condemn them and make them unroadworthy or a reason to scratch our heads and ask ourselves if we should keep this thing or maybe get it down the road and ship it. One of the things I mentioned was flood vehicles or vehicles that have been submerged underwater. And the way I pick up on these is many times, as soon as I get in the vehicle, there's a distinctive smell. It smells like mildew, it smells a little odd, and that might cue me in that there's an issue, or just the opposite. If there's a lot of perfume smells, like somebody tried to clean it up and cover up a smell, you might notice that. And if you do, what I do is I run my hands along the carpets and feel for any moisture or wet spots, things like that. And if I find them in particular, I pull back the carpet and inspect underneath. They may have cleaned the carpet, but underneath it's not likely that that got cleaned and you can have a better idea of if the car had been underwater or not and for how long. Aside from a vehicle being in a flood and submerged in water, there's another way that water can get into the vehicle. And that is what well, we'll call it bad body work. If the body work, well, if there's been a body repair and it hasn't been done sufficiently or seals are missing or not lining up, then water can get into the vehicle that way. And one example of that is, well, not necessarily on this door, but you can see how this door doesn't necessarily mesh up with the body all that well. Plus there's a difference in paint between here and here, which indicates to me that there's been some kind of collision repair. And if I have water on the floor and I have a collision repair like this, this might be where I look to find the source of the problem. Look at the outside of the vehicle as well as the carpet for the cause of that leak or the cause of that water intrusion, wherever it might've come from, whether it's a flood or collision repair that might not be up to par. As long as we're on the subject of body work and fitment in those types of things, another thing to look out for is overspray, particularly on the suspension and areas like that. There's none on this vehicle, but another thing to look for is is these stickers on the inside of all the body panels. When these vehicles are new, they put those stickers on all the panels to identify that to go with this particular vehicle. And here's a sticker on the passenger door, and these are on all the external body panels. There should be one on the hood too. Say if you see a sticker on one side and you don't see a sticker on the other, well, the side without the sticker likely has been replaced at a body shop and that requires further investigation. It's just a quick way to check to see if body work has been done to a vehicle or not. If you're purchasing a vehicle, you can often look at things like Carfax to see if it's been in a collision or something like that in the past. However, that only reports things that were reported. If body work was done and it was never reported, it's not gonna show up on a Carfax. So you really wanna do your diligence and look the vehicle over physically instead of just relying on a Carfax. Now let's get this up in the air and get a look at the structural integrity. Now I'm gonna inspect the structural integrity of the vehicle or just the undercarriage as well. And I'll start, well, doesn't matter if you start at the back of the front, but this is my handy uh, frame inspection tool. This is a tow hitch, so it's not really structural other than for towing, but well, I already see a problem. If you could put a screwdriver through something like this, that's not good because that's the structure of the vehicle. And when you're trying to tow something worth thousands of pounds, this is not good. So you don't want to see this. And <laughs> we've already got off to a bad start, but continue along the frame. This is the body up here. These are the body mounts. Um, if your vehicle does have a frame, some vehicles don't have a frame, vehicles like this truck do. But we're looking at the structural areas like this. And I'll just take the screwdriver and poke and see if it goes through. If it doesn't go through, well, then I'm okay with it. But if it does go through, I'm not so okay with it. And right, we'll continue along. But you can see the frame is where everything hangs off of. So the suspension is here, all this stuff hangs off of this frame. So if this structure is bad, none of that stuff can do its job. And look, here's another spot in the frame that's not good. You see that? That means that structure's gone. Not good. 
I can keep going along. Look, there's another spot. Oh, well, wait. Here's a patch right here where it looks like somebody tried to uh, repair a, a damaged frame that's here. And there's some here, but this piece here has been replaced. So somebody's already attempted to fix this. So unfortunately, this vehicle has several spots. Now this is a hole in the body, and we spoke earlier about water intrusion. This is the type of thing that can cause that. Aside from bad collision repairs, just corrosion can create holes in the floor and allow water to come up in. So this might, this might contribute to something like that, but it's not a structural problem. Look carefully, because there may be spots that are trying to hide like this one was. So this is also structure. This holds the frame and everything together, but look, the screwdriver goes right through it, up into here. That is a bad situation. This uh, Toyota, unfortunately, is very rusty, and I've just gone down one side, and I've already condemned it, and that's the thing. You don't just go down one side, you go down both sides, and yes, I know these parts are all brand new on this vehicle, but that's because we make videos to show you how to fix things. So don't worry about that. Worry about this frame and all the connections here or other places. Again, if, if you see a lot of rust on coil springs and things, look to see if they're broken. Uh, but rust on this, well, this is repairable, and you just replace the strut and the spring. But it gets a little more involved when we start seeing areas in the frame that, well, there's another one. <laughs> There's quite a few. Ooh, and here's something else. This is a body mount. So this is what the body sits on the frame. This is how the body is mounted to the frame. So you can see this rubber and everything is all gone here, but this is not necessarily a structural issue. It's an issue that should be addressed, but it's not structure. Still, it's something to look out for. But this kind of thing, that's bad. Another giant hole. But that's what you're looking for. And if you find that, well, it might be time to look for something else. There's uh, plenty of rust on this frame and this structure to certainly give me pause about this vehicle. Well, we finished up the inspection on the Toyota and to be quite honest, it's worse than I thought. So let's go over to the Chevy and see how bad that one is. So who's worse? the Toyota or the Chevy? Let's find out. Here's an important note. If you're purchasing a used car and you see this checked off, as is no dealer warranty, you most certainly want to go through the process of this inspection or have somebody do this inspection for you before purchasing that vehicle because the last thing you want is to purchase something and have, well, structural damage or something that makes the vehicle unusable. So, as is no warranty, beware. Definitely check it out. With the Chevy, I'm gonna start with an external body inspection. And earlier I showed you taking the screwdriver and poking things and look to see if they're structurally sound or not. I don't recommend that you do this if you're going to a used car lot or you're purchasing a used vehicle from somebody. I don't think they would appreciate you poking at their vehicle with a screwdriver. Looking at rust on the outside, if it's significant, does not necessarily mean there's a structural problem, but it certainly means that you should walk around the rest of the vehicle and definitely take a look up underneath to see if there is structural damage if you have significant rust on the outside, like this Chevy does. Let's look around it. Another quick check that you can do without lifting the vehicle up in the air to check the structural integrity is opening and closing all the doors. It's pretty simple to do. And in this case, on this truck, this tailgate. So I'm trying to open this tailgate and I can't open it. And that could just be a broken latch, but it could also be that there's structural damage causing this tailgate to be in a bind where I can't open and close it. Same thing with doors or other parts of the body. So if you have difficulty opening and closing a door or you're unable to open a tailgate, something like that, that could indicate that there's another problem structurally that's much bigger than what you see on the surface. Here's another example of what I'm talking about on this tailgate. You see this enormous gap here could indicate that there's a misalignment between the tailgate and this back fender. It still could mean that there's an issue with this latch, but when you see something like this, well, you can start to suspect that there's a problem with the structure. Now, on the other side of this pickup truck bed, there is also a significant amount of rust that's been repaired. Uh, but the point of mentioning this is if you see a significant amount of rust, like on the body or even in this case on this rear wheel, there's a good chance it's also rusty underneath and is worth a closer look. So if you see a bunch of rust on the outside, take a look underneath because there's most likely going to be more underneath there that needs attention. With this truck, Sniffing around on the inside, I don't smell any mildew or anything like that that might indicate that there's, well, water intrusion anywhere. I'm more focused on looking at the structural integrity because of, well, the rust and things we found on the body. So let's do that now. We are now up underneath the Chevy truck. And, well, you can see that it is crusty, quite crusty. And oil leaks, oil leaks actually prevent rust. So this is an instance where oil leaks are good. 
well, not really, but it prevented this from rusting anymore. Again, we're looking for structural things. Um, this is a little bit here on the knuckle. That's just gross, but nothing that I'm going to be too concerned about. Um, but I want to go along the frame and make sure that it's solid. Oh, there's a problem right there. That is definitely an issue. It is frame damage that certainly needs to be addressed in some way. Take a look at the body mounts where the body mounts to some of these. Yeah, so the parking brake is non-existent. Here's more of those body mounts. Okay. So here's the place where the body mounts to the frame. And look at that. That piece completely missing. Nothing. So that's not good. Now that's not structural so much, but it certainly is part of the body and the body structure. So that would require attention. A little more solid back here. Slightly. The bumper, well, it's still there. It just, uh, Looks pretty crusty. Again, there's some stuff that's happening up here where the body is. I know, look at this. This is a frame repair. Somebody came in and welded some steel in here. So this isn't the first time that this truck has uh, encountered frame rot problems apparently. Looks like they also had the same issue with the body mount on this side. Looks like they welded up a piece into here and a piece up here where the body mount attaches. So more up towards the front, but there's certainly cause for concern on this truck with a lot of things that I see here structurally. I'd have to call it on this one. Let's put some context to everything we've talked about in this video so far. Let's talk numbers. This 2001 Toyota 4Runner, Kelly Blue Book, I looked it up, comes out to $5,800. I think that's a bit high, so I have an ETCG estimate of $3,500. So roughly valued at $3,500, this 4Runner. I also, in my research, discovered that the frames on these vehicles from 2001 to 2004 are actually under a recall from Toyota. Now, I think you'd be hard pressed to walk into a Toyota dealer at this point with your 2004 and get a frame replaced. It's more likely that you're going to have to go into the aftermarket and find some body shop or something to do this type of repair. The best I could come up with is a replacement cost of around $8,000, and that's using a labor cost of $100 an hour at 23 hours comes out to $2,300. The rest of that would be the parts cost. So you're looking at roughly $8,000 to spend on a vehicle that may be worth $3,500. And that's just the frame. That doesn't count any of the mechanical things, any of the tires, any of the other stuff. So there's still other costs that's potentially there on top of that. The 1999 Chevy Silverado Kelly Blue Book is about $6,200. I think that's high again. So I'm putting an estimate on that truck at about $3,000. The frame, the part cost is roughly around $2,000. The labor for that, I'm gonna guess around 18 hours at $1,800. That leaves us with about $3,800 repair on a $3,000 vehicle. I think you can see quite clearly how these numbers are stacking up if you have to go to a full frame replacement. Now, can you get frames repaired? Yes, you can, but they need to be done by a certified professional because the frame is an integral part of the vehicle. Everything bolts to it, everything attaches to it, the body, the suspension, all of it. And also in the event of a collision, it's also a safety feature because if you get into a collision with a compromised frame, that's gonna mean that the vehicle is not gonna crumple in the way it was designed to originally, which makes it less safe. So it's very important to have this and have this repaired properly when you do. It is possible and it will cost less money, but I have no idea. Now I realize I just spent a bunch of time in this video talking about the structural issues that you can find in a vehicle, uh, whether it's a frame problem or a subframe problem and how much it could potentially cost to repair that. And I realize my numbers are somewhat vague, but the takeaway is it's gonna be really expensive if you have a structural problem with your vehicle. But what happens if you're looking at, like say an engine replacement or a transmission replacement or some other expensive repair that could put you out of that vehicle. 
I can't say for sure whether you should keep that vehicle or not, but this is what I recommend. I recommend you have the entire vehicle looked over or you look the entire vehicle over for any issues that it might have. There could be some other problem that you're not aware of that's also equally expensive or expensive enough to say, you know what, that's too much, I need to move on. So get a good assessment of the entire vehicle before you make that decision of replacing an engine or transmission or some other expensive repair that you're looking at and say, is this going to be worth it to me? And then you have to break down, well, what am I going to spend a month on a car payment or, or anything like that? It's really a financial decision. This is the takeaway here. If you're into a structure repair, most likely it's time to move on. Let's just leave it at that. I'll put links in the description to additional information and things like that. So check the description for more information. If you have automotive questions not covered in this video, I ask that you go to ericthecarguy.com, also linked in the description. So description has all kinds of additional information, please go there. Otherwise, I'm Eric the Car Guy. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope this information was helpful to you. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. I will see you next time.